Hey guys, we're at Jericho Beach in Canada. Beautiful day. We've been riding along the trails and across the park a little bit. Found this quiet area to show you the new Radwagon 4. They've completely redesigned this thing. It's now available in three colors. We've got this pearlescent white, satin black, just like the Rad Runner over here, and then their high visibility orange. That's kind of what Rad is known for, as well as their low prices, okay? So $14.99 on this thing. Very impressed that they were able to keep that, that price point, but innovate in a lot of ways. The primary focus when I first heard about this bike was this new wheel size. So the tires are 22 by three inch. So that three inches, that's very wide. A lot of traditional bicycles will have like 2.15 or maybe even 1.75, but three inches, you know, it's almost like a fat tire. And what that gives you is stability, comfort, because there's higher air volume. It's a little bit taller, and that gives you a lower attack angle, which is more comfortable, but they probably didn't want to go too tall because then mounting the bike becomes a bit more difficult, loading it with cargo, also more difficult. This thing can handle 350 pounds, like 120 pounds of cargo uh, on the rear, and there are tons of accessories. You can see here, we do not have the wooden deck on this bike, but it does come with that, I'm told. What we can see here, though, are these Yep windows. So there are two of these. You can fit two child seats on this. They've got these really cool deck hand handlebars Bars. You could put one here and one here, and apparently it's like a backrest, but I was remembering back when I was a kid, my parents had a Ford Taurus station wagon, and in the back, the seat like flipped forward kind of, almost where you'd put like a spare tire or something, and the kids could ride backwards. So I was like, wow, you could probably put like one kid facing backwards just for fun. I was getting uh, excited about the different possibilities. They have another thing that surrounds kids and it has a second bar so you don't get your fingers pinched if, if you get close to a wall or something. Very thoughtful. They've got these running boards, whole bunch of accessories, as well as the front baskets and trays that we're used to with Rad Power Bikes. And you can see that same interface over here with the Rad Runner. And this one has a little seat pad so you could take a buddy along with you. This is their most affordable model and it comes with these little pegs. So you can also get pegs. Rad Runner also has custom sized tires. These ones are 20 by 3.3. Okay, and they've got this like checkerboard pattern versus this kind of a hybrid, a little bit smoother. So these ones are slightly wider, a little bit more rugged for off-road. I love that both of these bikes come with plastic fenders. Plastic's gonna be a little bit more durable uh, than, than like maybe steel that could rust and get scratched over time. A little bit lighter weight. Plastic can rattle a little bit, but it doesn't get bent out of shape like aluminum can. Um, it comes with this skirt guard as well. So I'm trying to like list off all of the stock components on this, because there are quite a few unique ones. These big fenders here come back, it's connected in one, two, three places. And then the skirt guard is connected in, looks like three places as well, actually four places. That's just gonna keep your skirt or other straps and stuff from getting caught in the spokes. Rad does sell these like Ballard bags and stuff. So if you're just someone who wants to commute with this, this would also be a pretty decent platform. Depending on your job, you could actually load it up with a bunch of cargo, groceries or lumber or whatever. It does have integrated lights, which I care about. Integrated, meaning they run off that main battery pack. Rad is going with the same battery pack for like all their bikes, which makes it a little bit more affordable if you need a replacement or maybe you just want to, you know, you've got a couple bikes in the family and one person takes a couple batteries for a long adventure. You can do that with these bikes. And I feel like the, the design of this pack is it's pretty good, you know? It's it's not gonna be so long or sharp on the edges that it won't fit into like those Ballard bags that I was talking about. You can see there's this black controller box and it's external, it's not part of the battery integration. And the battery's not built into the frame like we see with some of the more expensive e-bikes these days. Now what that does is it separates the heat from the battery pack. And again, it makes replacement packs a little bit more affordable, which is a big deal. Buying one of these bikes, even if it's around 1500 US, it's still a good chunk of money, and it's nice to feel like you're gonna be supported, especially because they primarily sell online. They do have Rad Mobile services now. They'll like deliver it to you uh, with this van in certain large cities. That's a program that they're rolling out, but in a lot of cases, you might just get like a huge box, and at that point, it can feel like um, I'm, I, it's, it's all up to me now. So I love that they do offer such good support um, with their products. Other innovative features is this headlight. You can see there's like this light ring around the end, and then there's a focus beam in the center that's super bright. It's got this little metal heat sink thing on top. Again, heat, how are you gonna deal with that? How are you gonna deal with the power of a bike like this? We are in Canada, so this one is spec'd at 500 watts nominal. But in the US, the motor can be specced all the way up to 750 watts. You can see this is actually a Bafang planetary geared hub motor. 
and it's fat bike specific, which is interesting because again, this isn't technically a fat bike, but being able to use this motor, the same motor that they have in the Rad Rover, kind of that off-road full-sized electric bike is really nice. You get the same sort of power, 80 newton meters of torque, whether you have the Canadian 500 version, the US 750 watt version, or if in you're somewhere in Europe, they have to go to 250 watts, they have to spec it down a little bit. And I was noticing this big kickstand before. It's very sturdy. It's gonna support the rack and keep the bike upright for when you're loading it. And then you can step over this kind of mid-step frame like this and you can handle the bike and then maybe turn it on. I like the white color because that is gonna be a little bit more visible and a little bit safer. And especially if you've got kids and stuff, they do have a 12 magnet cadence sensor down here, a little bit exposed. You can see this one's actually a little bit dusty from our riding, um, but it's another very common proven part. The little sensor on the other side, 12 magnets. So when you start and stop pedaling, it's going to listen very closely. And then again, these brake levers override at all times. I like that they are rubberized on the edge because that's going to keep your hands a little bit warmer if it's a cold day and just give you a bit more comfort. Same thing with these ergonomic grips. They are not locking. It's a cheaper part, but at the same time, it feels pretty good. It gets the job done. I love that they've got an integrated bell on the left just for a safe, fun way to give people the heads up that you're blasting through 180 millimeter disc brake rotors front and rear that's pretty good especially since these are smaller wheels not quite as small as you know some of their folding bikes or maybe the rad runner but but still it, it's a good mechanical advantage thick 12 gauge spokes front and rear definitely appreciate that now as far as mechanical brakes go if it were my choice i'd love it if they were hydraulic but those aren't quite as easy to service by the end user you know, it just, it requires different tools. And usually I've gone to a shop to get help with that. So mechanical, it's just more approachable in a lot of ways, but that right brake cable has to go all the way back here. It's a little bit further. So when I squeeze it, see it's going all that way. And over time, these cable housings and stuff can get a little bit just dirty. Um, I, I do appreciate the way they've mounted this. It's not like tipped down where water will run into it, but it's, it's kind of flat. So just, you kind of keep that in mind, the right brake, takes a little bit more hand effort and that's one of the differences comparing this to maybe a more expensive cargo bike with hydraulic brakes or something like that it's one of the areas they compromise but they didn't compromise in terms of motor power and how they mounted that motor so this is 175 millimeter dropout versus 135 or 142 that we see on most tr traditional bikes and that allowed them to do the fat fat motor from the rad rover and then they've also included a little torque arm down here to handle the extra forces most of the rad bikes have a torque arm just like this and so great i'm glad that they carried that through and for me it was just interesting to see that they've almost built this like a fat bike even though they've got this custom tire size i was talking to the guys at rad and i'm like well you know what's going to happen when people buy this bike and you know they do get a flat tire and they said okay well it does have puncture protection built in they are also reflective which is nice for safety um, but if you do get a flat they are going to be providing tubes and tire replacements for these things so they're like we have plenty of those don't worry about it not a big deal because this is a, is kind of a brand new standard and i think it goes back to the rich history of this company actually supporting their products and still providing battery packs for like their old old bikes i like that all their new bikes kind of use the same battery pack but they do provide some of the older ones so you shouldn't have a problem with that um, I'll give you a close-up of these fenders and while we're at it look at this this deflopulator right there so that keeps that front wheel kind of straight and from tipping and i think that comes back to loading up that rear rack or maybe even the front rack the front rack is mounted to the frame so it's not going to turn and, and kind of dump as you're steering or if you were parking on a hill it's all done very well. Look at these like extra thick welded gussets on the frame. The bike is actually kind of surprisingly heavy. It's like 76 and a half pounds. That's like three pounds heavier than the older Rad Wagon. And I was like, why? And I think it's because they're just really beefing up the frame, making it extra sturdy. They've got this telescoping C post now, which is pretty cool. 34.9 millimeters on the base. I don't know what the top is. I wasn't able to get it out because there's like this little set screw right here. But for me, I was like, well, what can I do about comfort? Can I add a suspension seat post? Rad does sell a suspension seat post, which is a nice product to upgrade to. They have the SR Sun Tour NCX post. It's like a hundred bucks, pretty good. But how would you mount that to this bike? You'd either need to use a shim down here to go from 34.9 to 27.2, or maybe you could just take off this collar with that set screw and mount it here. I'm guessing this might be 30.9. I might have a note on that back at the website. They're using the same saddle 
with that integrated handle, that's pretty cool. And then the other thing you can do for comfort is lower the tire pressure on these custom tires. So 35 to 65 is what they recommend. Higher tire pressure is gonna be quieter, much more efficient and help you reach that up to 45 mile range that they, they estimate on the website. They say kind of 25 to 45, depending on the level of assist. That's pretty good. And again, coming back to having a second battery pack or taking the charger, the charger weighs about a pound and a half. It's only a two amp charger and charging it with a two amp charger is a little bit slower. So I feel like, eh, you know, it'd be nice if they had a faster charger. And I have asked about that in the past and the founders have said, well, this is a really proven charger. You know, it's UL certified, it's very reliable and it's cheaper to replace. So, you know, again, $1,500 electric bike, there are a lot of things that I wanna praise about it, but th that's another one of the little trade-offs. So coming back to the tires, you can lower the tire pressure and that's gonna give you a little bit more stability and comfort. It'll take the edge off in terms of vibration. This is a steel fork, just like the kickstand. So, you know, if it gets scratched or whatever, you could get a little bit of rust on it, but it does provide a ton of strength and a different ride quality, like a little bit of vibration dampening there. So all in all, even though there's no suspension fork, this is a very sturdy, rigid, solid, feeling bike and having that that new tire standard 22 inches versus 20 it, it the lower attack angle the higher air volume 3.0 width I mean, it's a good choice it's a good build i think they've done a really good job despite not having that suspension fork which i've seen on some other bikes lately while we're down here i should point out they've got a couple of bottle cage bosses there and they're very reachable so if you're riding and you get thirsty and maybe you put a folding lock on those lower ones so we're we're over here looking at this bike we got a bottle cage and a folding lock so they're trying to give you lots of of accessory mounting points which i think is great and you can see how the battery is mounted on this one pretty good weight distribution i actually weighed this bike from right here and it was pretty stable so being able to pick up a bike at the middle and feel like it's not tipping in one direction that's a good sign yeah there's a little bit more weight back here with the cassette and the the hub motor and everything and the, the huge rack um but putting that battery weight a little bit further forward and then it, this is a heavy duty kind of a fancy handlebar and stem setup right we've got a, a riser here and then 80 millimeters of or i guess 80 degrees of adjustability so it could be forward and down and kind of extending your reach or upright how i have it because i like that comfortable upright body position that's pretty cool and then the shifting mechanism here this is a seven speed it's this big thumb shifter which sometimes i complain about because it it feels like you have to kind of reach up and maybe compromise your grip if your hand slides forward i like the little trigger shifters but they aren't as intuitive to a lot of people this is very visible and it's easier to use if you have gloves on in the winter and if you've got you know the rad wagon it's loaded up with kids and you have to ride it every day maybe you are wearing gloves so i get it it, it works well enough and that actuates back here with the acera it's a decent derailleur and it's a couple steps up from um, the base level. There's like Turney, Altus, Acera, Alivio. So good stuff and it's protected by the derailleur guard. We've even got the, the motor cable right here that probably gets a little bit of extra protection just from having that. You can see it's even scratched up on this one. So that's, it's a good sign. It's doing its job. And then 11 to 34 tooth cassette, plenty of range there. We'll talk about that more when we're out on the ride, but uh, it's a good setup. You can see how long the chain is and get another look at that that slap guard from here lots to lots to say about this bike and seeing it completely rebuilt from the ground up and asking myself like why did they do these things what are the trade-offs how is this going to work in the wild i love that 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 light points where you steer i like that it's extra bright i like that the the wheels feel like they're solid um, I guess I, that's to me, that's, that's a really big deal. I can see why they went to that extreme effort of making like a whole new standard for this wheel size because it does make a difference. Like traditional wheel sizes are like 20, 24, which is usually on kids' bikes, 26, 27.5, 29. Um, so to get to make one that's just like a little bit bigger than 20, you're like, well, why? Why not just go to 24? It raises that minimum like standover height right here right it, it's it's going to raise the minimum saddle height and i've measured these back at the website because i know a lot of people especially if you if you're not as comfortable riding or you're in a crowded city environment you want to be able to touch the ground while sitting on this the saddle just for stability and and you can do that here um pretty effectively i think a wide range of of different body types are gonna feel comfortable on this bike so i want to get this battery off real quick and just show you what that's like this weighs about 7.7 .7 pounds and rad set it up so you can actually pull the key out 
with the battery locked. So if you're at work or school or something and you don't want people to, to tamper with the bike, you can kind of leave it on the bike, but you lock it. I think that's really cool. To get it all the way off though, you have to like push it in and then twist, and then you can just slide this up. Let's see it here. There it is. I like how they've got uh, three different bolts there. So it's it's fairly securely mounted and well protected in between the frame tubing right there. Kept low and fairly centered on the bike for improved um, yeah, balance and stuff. Yeah, let's see if we got the... There we go. There are the specs. 48 volt, 14 amp hour, 672 watt hours. This can be charged on or off the bike just with that little... Let's see here. Plug port right there. Just got a little rubber cover and it's got a little charge level indicator on one side somewhere. Oh, there it is at the top. <laughs> you don't want to drop your battery. Um, also, if you can keep this in a cool dry location, extreme cold kind of stunts your range. It sort of puts the battery to sleep and extreme heat can actually damage the lithium ion cells. But they're using high quality Samsung 35E they're they're really uh really high quality cells and rad has a pretty good like one year comprehensive warranty and so i'm gonna slide this back on the frame carefully there we go that worked pretty well and then turn it to the on position take these keys out so they won't be rattling while we ride and now we can boot this thing up but before we do check this out there's a little usb port on the bottom that's a full size usb a standard charging port you could potentially put your phone up here or maybe an additional light we were talking about how that one's a little bit low you can mount something up here maybe a boom box i've seen people do that sometimes it's pretty fun this stuff is all highly water resistant most e-bikes are but they recommend that you if you're going to wash your bike kind of take a wet rag to it versus spraying it hard with water because that can kind of get into the electronics and that sort of thing i believe this display is made by king meter i've seen it before but rad power they put their brand on, on a lot of stuff. So to turn on the display, we just hold that mode button for a couple seconds. It comes to life very quickly. Pedal assist one by default. And the lights are not on by default. But the good news is if you pull the brake lever, we get that, that brake light on the back, which is pretty cool. If we want to turn on both lights, we hold up and mode simultaneously. And you got a little light icon and actually backlighting on the display. I love how the headlight, the lens protrudes a little bit so you can actually be seen from the sides as well as the front. It's a, it's a good setup that way. And then there are a couple other little secrets here I'll show you in a second. But the default readouts are battery charge level. There's five ticks. Each one represents 20%. There's an odometer reading. Speed, so that's your current speed, like how fast you're going. And then level of assist. We're in one, but we could take it down to zero. So pedal assist turns off, but you've still got the throttle, right? That's active at all times. So kind of keep that in mind. And then watts. And we can take it all the way up to level five for the most power. That's gonna drain your battery the quickest, but it, it's definitely the zippiest and kind of most satisfying if you're a sporty rider and you're having fun. Um, now, if we tap this up arrow, speed changes to, oh, actually we have to hold it. There we go, speed changes to average speed and max speed. And if we tap mode, um, that actually changes from odometer to trip meter up in the top right. So that is very cool. If we hold the down arrow, we get walk mode, which could be useful if you're going across the beach or something like that. Cause even though these are almost fat tires, they don't offer that really low tire pressure that you need to float across sand. So kind of keep that in mind. Walk mode's useful for a really loaded up bike, especially if it's a crowded environment or something. And then if you hold up and down simultaneously, we get to the settings, which is really cool. We could change the, the tire size here, but you probably wouldn't want to do that. Uh, top speed so you can actually lower this which is nice if you want to maximize your range or maybe just take it easy and don't get feeling like you're going too fast three this is brightness level so you can go one two or three if them if the menu is too bright at night you can take it down and then uh, set four is for kilometers versus miles per hour so that's the units and with that i'll hold mode and exit so that's it let's go ahead and hop on this thing and do a little ride test Okay guys, we're on the bike. I'm in the highest level of assist and I guess I'm just gonna start pedaling here. Feeling fairly stable because of those big tires. Very upright body position here.
Brakes are doing pretty well, even just with one hand because of those large disc brakes. Let's try hands-free again. Very cool. The, the bike is, is also very stiff. It's hard to communicate that on camera sometimes, but frame stiffness is a, is a pretty big deal with these long tail cargo bikes because there's just so much weight. And I really feel like they've reinforced this frame here. Okay guys, you're connected to the seat post and you can see the 46 tooth chain ring. Pretty nice setup with the double-sided aluminum alloy guide. So you're not gonna lose that chain very easily. And that's great because this is a super long chain since this is a long tail cargo bike. Rad has put that neoprene slap guard right there so you don't chip the, the beautiful paint. And you probably can't see it from here, but we got the Acera derailleur 11 to 34 tooth freewheel, which is very nice. It's DNP nickel plated. So it's gonna hold up a little bit better, not rust. Definitely like the drivetrain. I'm in the highest level of assist. So you can really hear that motor. Very smooth, the brakes are working great. And even in that softer gravelly stuff with a bit of sand, the bike feels stable, very comfortable. These, these tires are really nice. It's a good, I think because of the width, you don't need to have quite as many knobs for it to provide good traction on sand gravel. Um, but it's smooth and it's quiet. You're not getting the like brrr sound that you do on mountain bike tires. So let's do it on the street. really flies. Okay, we're in kind of unstable terrain right here. It's just a grassy hill and I wanted to test out that double leg kickstand. It is steel, uh, so if you chip that and scratch it over time, it get a little bit of rust. And I've heard people say they use nail polish or some spray paint, but it, it just, it really stabilizes the bike, which is important if you're putting, you know, precious cargo on the back. You've got a couple kids, maybe you're distracted. You don't want the bike to tip. I think the, the mid middle kickstand is the, the right way to go and it's positioned further back, right? So you're still getting decent ground clearance. And I think that's another advantage of these slightly uh, wider wheels that they chose. Right, so I'm gonna do this one more time off-road. And it's not terrible, but you can hear the kickstand bouncing down, up and down a little bit on some of those bigger bumps. And then maybe just the chain, depending on what gear you're in. In the higher gears, you're using the smaller sprocket in the rear. So there's, there's just more length in the chain that can flop around. If you downshift and you go to a low gear, which is great off-road anyway, in case you need to stop, you can start again pretty easily. That's gonna spread the chain a little bit and create some tension with the derailleur and reduce the, the slapping that you hear. Okay guys, I raised the, the saddle pretty high and the stem just to simulate what it would be like for a taller rider. You, you can't do a whole lot about reach. You either raise the bar or you put it forward, which, you know, there's a little bit of reach, but it is a bit more compact so that this can facilitate a wide range of riders. In any case, I'm gonna pedal, should be able to get, you know, nice big pedal strokes. It feels natural like a traditional bicycle. It doesn't feel like I'm really squatting down or struggling um, to get that leg extension. start again this time uh, with no assist, just pedaling it like a bicycle. Uh, Cause I think it's, it's pretty capable that way, especially with the lower gear.
guys, we're gonna do a little ride, third person style. So that wasn't exactly the steepest hill in the world, but I was able to make it up in part because I had a little bit of momentum going into it. I've been testing the throttle and just trying to see what this motor can do. Again, we are on the Canadian spec version, so it's 500 watt, but it still gives you 80 Newton meters of torque, which is pretty good. Thanks, man. So good. We got the riding handoff. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> Guys, I think that's it. Um, hopefully this answered all your questions and you know, we've got some good specs back at the side. I try to cover as much as I can, but I know these things get long. You could compare this to the original Rad Wagon if you'd like. There's a cool compare tool. Ride safe, have fun out there. I love you guys and we'll see you next time.